So my lecture today is about a very difficult subject. <laughs> and uh, not only difficult, but uh, actually it's very easy, but when people look at the uh, Egyptian language, and the one mistakenly called hieroglyphs, they feel they are facing a puzzle. And it's like a very, very mysterious puzzle. But today, I'm going to show you that this is an easy language. I'm going to enjoy it and I will help you try to understand how we can recognize some of the symbols and the, uh, how we can read the language. Okay, the first thing is, we call it what? The ancient Egyptian language, not hieroglyphics. We're going to explain what does it mean, hieroglyphics. But the language is called the ancient Egyptian language. And there is another name called by Hakim, they call it the Sufi language, because of kind of um, um, one of the uh, reasons that uh, we have, there is a famous Sufi groups in the Islamic world, but it seems that the Sufi actually were much before the, the Muslims came to Egypt. And the, the basic meaning of the Sufi, as we understand in the Middle East, that the one who desires nothing, like a monk, and they live with the basic things, they don't like any rich life or any uh, um, luxury, okay? And some others say, no, they are the ones who can have very good connections and the, the spirit is very high. So the Sufi language, but the name everybody agree about is the ancient Egyptian language. So that is what we call it nowadays, the ancient Egyptian language. What about the ancient times? The ancient Egyptians called their language Midu Netter. And when we say Midu Netter, actually we read it from, it is from left to right, as you can see, as I, I didn't teach you this yet. But actually the word Midu, it, the word to the right side, and the word Netter is the one to the left side. Okay, so the word in English doesn't match, the, the order in English doesn't match the order in the English. Midu Netter means the divine uh, language or the, the language descended from above, from the sky, from the divine, from higher power. That's why one of the very interesting things that the ancient Egyptians were accused not to be good students or not to be uh, aware of the languages of the other countries. That's why the Egyptians, when they were uh, sending the letters, like to communicate with Babylon, with uh, ancient Lebanon, with uh, Turkey, they were hiring a translator to write with their own language, the Kony uh, form language, and they received the letters in the same way and someone is translating, but they didn't send any messages or any letters with the Egyptian language. Not because they didn't want to learn, actually, yes, but not, not because of the capability, but because they considered the language is holy language. No one deserves to learn that language except them. So they didn't teach anyone outside Egypt. And they didn't send any letters from this language outside Egypt. So all the letters they used was in the cuneiform. Okay. Another name for the language, we call it Er en Kemet. The mouse of Egypt. The shape to the left side, that's the shape of the mouse. And N means of, and Kemet is Egypt. The mouse or the tongue or the language of Egypt. As I told you, they were proud of this language. And they thought, or that is what they believed, that no one shared or gave any opinion or any add to the language. It came to them completely perfect and uh, there is nothing more to add. Here we are. So the language is ancient Egyptian language, but how we write the language? So that is the name. How we write the language? What kind of font? 
So the Egyptian language was written in three forms, or like they say, handwritings, shorthand, hieroglyphics, hieratics, demotics. Those are Greek names. The ancient Egyptians didn't give uh, a clear name for the writing. But we can identify the different type of writings, as we're going to see. The Greeks call it hieroglyphics. It means the, the sacred writings. Why? Because they found that this type of writing is always written in temples and in tombs. But very rare cases on papyrus and very rare cases on uh, small pieces of stones as private letters or messages. And it is always written by the very talented scribes. And the scribe, to be a scribe, he must be a priest. The doctor, to be a doctor, he must be a priest. So education in ancient Egypt was from the temple. So everybody must be a priest first, and from being a priest, he will study any other kind of science. To be an accountant, to be a physician, to be a teacher, to be a scribe, but they all have the title priest. So that kind of writings, done by whom? By the very talented people, not even the, the students. They must have like a degree in this, and then they start writing the hieroglyphic form. That is an example. That is the priest to the right side. How we know he's a priest, not a commoner, from the style of what we call it the, uh, the, the, the cult, with the angle, and the bolt or the shaped head. So that is my target. If you look to the writings, what is the difference between the three different forms is the details and how fast and how slow they write this. Glyphs with this style, it means that they spend quite time doing this to show the details of each letter. That's why when we look carefully, we're going to see the owl is different from the goose, different from the chick. We can recognize that each one is different. But if I do it in a, in a hurry and someone amateur, you may cannot see the difference, especially between the, uh, the chick and maybe the falcon, between the duck and the goose. And you can see here that they made uh, the different size and also the different style of the, uh, of the feet, of the leg. I'm going to show you something. Understanding between the letters, so they made the letter of the check like this way. And the shape of the head of the owl, like square head. This is another type. And you can see sometimes they may scale the details inside the, the letter but the outside lines is still perfect and we can still understand that that bird in the middle it's an owl the bird on the right side it's a check the second font hieratics and also it is a greek name and they call it hieratics because it was written by the hierarchy people the priests so the priests are and, and not the priest as a scribe, it was the priest as a priest, writing what is going to happen in tomorrow uh, uh, festival, as an example, writing magical formulas, writing uh, some rituals, and the public's going to uh, say that in the following festival, uh, writing some papers teaching the other priests. So it was written by the hand of the priest, and the material they were using mostly uh, papyrus. So for glyphs, what was the, uh, they were writing glyphs above what? Above stone, walls of the temples and the tombs. But here, no, they were using the papyrus paper. That is an example of the hieratic. And I made sure to give you the glyph font and how it changed it 
to Heratic. And you can see it is, or as we understand, it is the same word, the same meaning, the same grammar structure, everything is the same. But the picture is only different. And not different, but they try to make it easier and quicker. Because if the scribe or anyone is writing a personal thing with the glyph style, he's going to spend a week writing this. But in this case, he's going to do it very quick. Because he will escape so much details as shown in the uh, hieroglyphic style. The third font is demotic, came from the word demos, which means people by the Greek language again. And that is the very quick style of writing and the very simple also style of writing and the very or the hardest one to read because we, we spent years to explain one uh, paper only because the very uh, fast handwriting from the locals so they didn't care about the, uh, the exact shape of the letter. But at the time, I believe they could read uh, what they can write, like we do nowadays. But for us, because we learn it, the, the good shape of the hieroglyphics, and the 50% of the heretics, this is have like maybe from 10 to 20% maximum from the details. And that is the example. Look. It looks scratches. <laughs> so I appreciate too much uh, those people who uh, are reading uh, demotics. I consider them uh, the, the smartest people in the world. <laughs> okay. But again, it's still the same thing. <coughs> like here, I will give you an example. Uh, that is the fourth font. But actually, we don't agree much about this as a font. We can call it as a baby language or a descender from the ancient Egyptian language. When the Greeks and the Romans came and occupied Egypt and then Egypt converted to be Christian uh, country, the Egyptian who practiced their language for thousands of years, when they started to write the language in their own fonts, the Greek rulers refused, said no, you must have the Greek touch, you must become Greek style. So this, it, we can call the Coptic language ancient Egyptian spoken language, okay, but written in Greek letters. So that is the Coptic language. They pronounce the Egyptian letters and they write with the, uh, Greco, uh, with the Greek letter. And of course, if you remember from yesterday, the vowels. So for the first time, we're going to find vowels in an Egyptian written word, but they again they used the Greek vowels doing this. That is the, the Greek writing of the, the Greek font, but each word is Egyptian word. When I pronounce the word, it matches that an Egyptian word. Until now, in Egypt, we still speak ancient Egyptian language, but we mistakenly think it is Arabic language. Yes, the, the, the main language is Arabic, but what we can call it the local language, not formal Arabic, or not formal Arabic. Uh, all the talk about the children in the street and about how we deal uh, which was each other the daily life, it is from ancient Egypt. Most, most of the locals, actually most of the Egyptians, they don't recognize that we speak ancient Egyptian language. That's an example of how the uh, signs change it from perfect, complete details to reach demotic at the end. But you can see how they try to keep the same shape of the letter, even with the less details, but each one has a unique form. That's why I remember when I said about the check, they made sure to make the, the knee or the angle of the leg, because they're going to need that later. Because each symbol has a unique sign, even if they make it very short uh, details, but that unique shape will exist. Like the, the symbol above, it has three angles, so you're going to find that they keep the three angles all the time. That one to the bottom, this is the word sesh, 
that Neil described, the one who is writing this. And the, the shape, it means the, the two circles, the ink, uh, black and, and uh, red, and the long one that the professor he is using to write. Okay, now if we face now the writings, how we read, or exactly how we look properly to the glyph. So we start reading from left or from right, or we read in this case from top, but also we need left or right. Okay? So, here is a question for you. Try to guess. Which one is correct? Mm, this one? The last one? No. This one. Who agrees with this one? Okay. And who agree with this one? I agree with this one. And who agree with this one? They are all for They are all Exactly. Because, and, and Yusuf mentioned that in his lecture, that we read against the direction. So they are all facing, or with the direction, they are all facing left. So we start reading from left. Okay? And that's why you will see the whole text facing left. You will not find any, and some special cases uh, are different, not because they are against, but that is how we write. It is always written on right shape, but that's why we must write it like this. But the whole thing must face left. Or in this case, the whole text must face right. And in this case, we read from uh, the uh, horizontal style. It will be easy for us. But that type, the vertical, we choose right or left and we start reading from top to bottom and then we start from the top again doing that. But there is no uh, uh, style from bottom to up. Only three, right, left, left, right, up to down. Okay, so that's your first thing now. When you see in text, look to the faces, facing which direction, so you can understand which one. But everything is facing left, so why not start on the right side? Hmm? This one? Yeah. What about this one? Everything is facing left. Yes. So we start from left, from the but left from right. the top. From the left to the top. Yes, from the left to the top. Okay. Some cases we're going to see two of them, and I forget about this example. One facing left, one facing right. But it will be most of the cases like a mirror style, facing each other. So we read from the middle, Some, and we start from the middle, we read right, or from the middle, we read left. Okay, so we can have the two, but that is one of the rare designs. Okay. So what are the type of the Egyptian language? Is it a language like we understand? I can say that the, the languages of all uh, of all the languages of the world are originally from ancient Egypt. And the example that the, the three directions, we just talked about it, this is what we are using nowadays. From left to right, this is the Latin languages, and all the European and the, all the descendants of the Latin language, English, French, and everything. From right to left, this is Arabic and the Middle Eastern languages. And from top to down, this is the Asian languages. The second style uh, languages was very uh, poor alphabet, and languages was very rich alphabet, and languages was pictures, or what we call it iconographic style, like the Asian style. Too. So they have the uh, the word and letters next to it explaining that word, but they can use the letters, the alphabet, or they can use the picture itself. That is also included in the Egyptian language. We have what we can call it alphabet, but that is a wrong name because we call it letter with one sound. Like our normal A, B, C, D. Okay? So that is one of the, uh, we call it uni letters. It has one sound, that is S. And some people say it says, could be Z or, or uh, like Z. Okay? One sound only. So what the story of the second one? 
It is one symbol, but we read it bear, P and R, two symbols, but still treat it as one symbol, not two symbols.